Welcome back to this Derby County video. We're going to be taking a look across all the news that has broken over the course of the last week or so. And we're also going to look ahead to Derby County versus Preston. Obviously, if you did not know already, Curtis Nelson has agreed a new contract to take him at Derby County up until the summer of 2026. Now, this is an option which was discussed in the fans forum, a video which I made a few weeks ago, reviewing everything and all the key information. Now, Obviously, that deal is a very, very important one for me. And there's still a couple which I think we need to get over the line. Obviously, with the return of Liam Thompson and the resurgence he's had over the course of recent weeks, I think he will be in line for a new contract as well. You look at the likes of Kane Wilson, who's put in a really, really good performance over the course of this season so far. Now, the big question for me is... Uh, what is going to happen with that back four? You obviously look at the likes of uh, Nat Phillips and Sonny Bradley. Obviously, Nat Phillips stepped in to deputise for uh, Erin Cashin in the previous game, which, in my opinion, he put in a really strong display and a really good performance. And it's something which I think uh, we're going to have to see the fight across the course of this season. Now, if you want to stay tuned for all of the latest Derby County news, updates, previews and match day vlogs, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell. Now... Back on to Curtis Nelson, a player who I believe has been very important for Derby County over the course of the last few weeks and even the course of the last 18 months maybe. I think he's been a really, really good player since Paul Warren brought him in and I think he's done an excellent job in that centre-back position. Now, he's created an excellent partnership with Aaron Cashin, obviously did a really good job with Nat Phillips and I think the big question is who is going to be that uh, right-sided player next to him. Obviously, with Ryan Niambi picking up that devastating knee injury, which looks as if it's going to keep him out until around February, March time. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who takes that slot. We've obviously seen um, Kane Wilson in that position. We've seen Joe Ward. We've obviously seen us go to a back three as well at times. So it's going to be interesting to see how that progresses heading into uh, this one versus Preston North End this upcoming weekend, which is going to be a really interesting one for Derby County. On the travels again, um, and obviously we've not had the greatest of luck on the road, but that's something which looks to be on its way around over the course of the last few weeks. Picked up a draw versus Millwall, obviously the victory versus Coventry, some really, really important results. Now, heading into this one, let's take a look at... Now, as mentioned, let's take a look at Curtis Nelson, a really, really impressive player for Derby County. He's made 68 appearances since signing on that free transfer from Blackpool. And in my opinion, is probably been one of our star performers over the course of um, the last 18 months. I think he's done a really good job in that central defensive position. He's obviously moved out to the right on occasion as well, uh, playing as... Um, a right side centre half, right back, depending on whoever plays in front of him. Obviously, if you put Kane Wilson in front of him, he's obviously bombing on and things like that. And at 31 years of age, will be 32 at the end of this season. So, in my opinion, he's probably got another two-ish years ahead of him. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes. Obviously, uh, nobody wants a player to decline. And so far, he's not showing any signs of that, which is obviously the most important part of this he's not showing any signs that he's going backwards and that's obviously a massive inclination now another player who uh, is on course for a potential extension where is he Kane Wilson a player who I believe will sign an extension a another year on his contract I believe his contract expires this summer and there's been no talk about an extension clause or anything like that so Obviously, this season, he's probably not played as much as he wanted. Just six starts. Picked up a lot, of, uh, a couple of little injuries, which have really impacted the way he's been involved in this game and uh, and with the club so far this season. But he scored four times for us. Uh, obviously, one goal this season versus Blackburn at the start of the season. So, if you haven't seen that goal, go and check it out. It's a really, really nice header. Although it meant absolutely nothing in the context of the game, it was a really, really good header. Now, if we do go ahead and look at Derby County in the league table. We're currently sitting 12th after 15 games with five wins, four draws, six defeats, 19 goals scored, 19 goals conceded, 19 points, three draws in the last five games with one victory and one defeat. But I think we're coming into a really good period of fixtures. We've obviously got Preston up next who are currently sitting 20th place. Then we've got Swansea, Sheffield Wednesday. A couple of wins in these games and we could be absolutely laughing about where we are in the division now we're obviously not that far away if we go back to the lead table we're only six points away from Watford I'm not saying we're in a playoff battle if you want to think that you're more than welcome to um but I did speak about that a playoff battle and the potential for where we could be and 
obviously the Plymouth game didn't go to plan in terms of the result, but we're still not that far away. And that's the interesting thing. At the minute, we're the top of the promoted clubs, which is the most important thing. We look as if we're quite stable. Uh, obviously, there's only like a four-point gap to those down at the bottom. But picking up results and keep going, and we will be A-OK. -okay. Now, let's just take a quick look into the game versus Preston. There's obviously some injuries to talk about, obviously. Uh, Callum Elder has picked up, picked up an injury. Uh, David Ozo looks like he's set to return in the course. Uh, whether it be for this game or another one, I'm not entirely sure. There's been a bit of discussion about that over the course of the last few weeks. Obviously, Ryan Niambi, he's going to be out for a, a little while longer. Uh, I think Paul Warren said it was something like three to four months, which is... Uh, 8 to 12 weeks, so I'm pretty sure that should be around January, February time, although it says on here uh, December, obviously, Tawanda Chi has been out for, uh, for a fair while, I think it's since the last international break, and um, obviously him coming back in will be interesting, I'm really intrigued to see what Derby County do with him when we get into January, but we obviously then move over to the Preston North End side of things, uh, obviously Osanovic is suspended, Chad Evans, Liam Lindsay, Patrick Bauer, Robert Brady and Will Keane all missing uh, with injuries, obviously uh, some of these players may be uh, on their way back in, so they might be on the bench or things like that, obviously Footmob isn't always 100% accurate on those sorts of things, now we look at the recent form of the two sides and both sides are in sort of indifferent form. Preston, three defeats versus Arsenal, Bristol City and Portsmouth and two draws versus Sunderland and Plymouth Argyle. Draw with Sunderland is a really, really good result and you know that, I know that and that's just something which it's, it's a very good result to get, especially at home and it's one of those for me where you probably look at that result out of context and go, oh, they must be doing all right, but they're sitting 20th in the league. Now, you look at Derby County, their only win in the last five was away from home versus Coventry City, Two, uh, three draws, sorry, versus Oxford, Hull and Plymouth Argyle, and a defeat versus Stoke City on the road as well. Now, the big question for me is when you look at the league table, a defeat for Derby would see them slip. Well, they wouldn't slip down the table, actually. Uh, they could, obviously, if uh, the likes of Stoke, Norwich and Sheffield Wednesday and Oxford all win, depending on Coventry's result potentially as well. But So we could go as low as 18th, which is obviously disappointing. But I'm really confident heading into this one. I think we've got a really, really good opportunity. Now, if we go down and find the lineup builder, we can go through what I'm expecting Paul Warren to do. And this is my opinion. This is what I'd like to see with us away from home. Now, if we just get Derby County in here, you can see the last game that we played. Let me move it back into that 3-5-2. And I pers this is personally what I would do. Now, uh, put Wilson on the right. You get uh, Curtis Nelson there. Thompson would go into the middle, but... We'll put uh, Nat Phillips in there. And then, obviously, where is Aaron Cashin? He goes in there. Jackson wouldn't go. That would be Thompson. Where are you, Liam Thompson? Let's find him. I'm going to have to type him in, aren't I? Liam, 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 Liam Thompson. There we go. In the middle, Evo Adams there. And my front two would be Dejon Brown and Jerry Yates. Now, the left back position is obviously up for debate. You could potentially put Callum Elder in there, but I'm not entirely sure if he's going to be uh, fit and ready. So it's one of those for me where this is what I'd go for. A 3-5-2, uh, in goal, Jakob Zetterstrom, uh, a back three of Cashin on the left, Phillips through the middle, Nelson on the right. A midfield five of Forsyth playing left wing back, Wilson right wing back, a midfield three of Kenzo, Adams and Tomo and then a front two of Jerry Yates and Dejon Brown. I think Dejon Brown has done really, really well uh, when he's made his opportunity. I think he did really well against Coventry. There's obviously uh, still a ways for him to develop, but I think he's done a really good job. Now, you can obviously let me know your thoughts down in the comments, so make sure you do do that. Um, but for me, going away from home... Keep that defensive stability. I think Phillips has done really well. I think Tomo's done really well. I think Wilson is a contentious point. You could maybe put Jackson out there. Or you could put Jackson out at left wing back um, just to get a bit more attacking threat in the team. But for me, I think if you bring Forsyth, 
uh, into that position or Callum Elder, whichever one's fit, then you can potentially move it to a back three um, and put Forsyth left back, Nelson right, no, back four, sorry, Forsyth left back, Nelson right back, a midfield uh, a midfield four of Wilson on the left, uh, to- uh, Wilson on the right, Tom on the left, Kenzo and Ibu through the middle and then Yates and Brown up front. I think that is a, that could happen um, if we want to play in a four. Now, that's obviously a discussion which uh, will happen in game and things like that. Obviously, I don't think Tomo's a left midfielder or a left winger. So, do not misquote me. Do not try and act like I'm trying to say that. So, yeah, that's, for me, what I'd go for. Um, but, shall we get into score predictions then? Now, obviously... Derby County haven't been in the greatest form on the road and there's obviously a long way for them to go this season. But in my opinion, I think we're going to come away with a 2-1 victory. There will be a review video out after the game tomorrow. Tomorrow? It's not tomorrow, is it? I've lost all track of my days. It's only Tuesday when I'm recording this. So there will be um, a review video out at the weekend after the game, obviously. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Make sure you turn on the notification bell as well. Um, I have put out a poll over on my YouTube community talking about the gaming content that I've dropped over the course of the last few weeks. So let me know what your thoughts are about that. Would you prefer me to split the channels or would you and keep this as a solely football channel and have a completely different channel for gaming? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll catch you in my next video.